Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Universal Dialect Show. This is show number 30. I want to apologize to anybody that watches uh, the video before this. I said it was episode uh, 30, but it's actually 29. Um, But this is episode 30, which is monumentous for me because I'm knocking out these episodes. I have a great guest today. Uh, He's a filmmaker, writer, investigative journalist, what I call a conspiracy realist. Uh, He has uh, two documentaries that you can watch right now. One called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon and Astronauts Gone Wild. I want to welcome Bart Sabrell. How you doing, sir? Good, Chris. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. I want to thank you for doing this. Um, it's funny because uh, we're going to talk mostly about the um, uh, moon today when yesterday I talked mostly about Mars with my guests. So um, we're, we're doing the planets thing, I guess, these, these two days. Um, so I know you don't have much time, so let's just jump right into it, sir. Um, I know that I've seen you on a ton of uh, documentaries. I've seen both documentaries, um, seen you on podcasts and whatnot, and you have an incredible story. So let's get into the origin story of uh, Bart Sabrell and what led you on the, your current path, sir. Well, <laughs> right before we started, I was, you know, commenting how who knew my life would end up being the moon man, the we didn't go to the moon guy. Um, I've been a filmmaker most of my life doing TV commercials, music videos, documentaries, things like that, and hope to, the Lord willing, make my first feature film this year. Uh, I grew up like everybody else, assuming the moon landings were real, and even more so. My father being in the Air Force and an officer, even though I was four years old and asleep in bed at the time, uh, a few weeks after allegedly they walked on the moon, he was given a VIP publicity packet of about 20 nine by 12 color prints of the alleged men on the moon. He gave it to me. It was my most cherished possession and put it up on my wall. The whole wall was dedicated to these pictures day after day, year after year for a decade. So I saw these pictures from the age of four to 14, assuming they were on the moon, like they claimed for 10 years. So that's uh, 3,650 times seeing these pictures, assuming that they were on the moon. And then when I'm 14 years old, I see a television program with a gentleman by the name of William Casing, who had very high security clearance at NASA. And he disclosed that he uh, read a memo from Von Braun to the Pentagon warning them that if they try to go to the moon for the first time with 1960s technology, which all of NASA combined, every computer there combined, had one millionth the computing power of your cell phone. So he said, if we try it with this, you know, uh, primitive technology, uh, there's only a one in 10,000 chance we'll do it successfully without killing the crew on worldwide television. And he said they basically decided to bluff like in poker when they had a bad hand. And uh, so I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Never thought about that. Fortunately, that idea caught me as an open-minded 14-year-old. I've talked to some college professors, Chris, and I showed them all this proof that, unfortunately, the Marine defalsified. And they say there's nothing that I could ever show them ever that would make them recant the glorious moon landings. And I said, well, what if you saw Neil Armstrong on national TV tearfully confessing that he staged it, that he's sorry and is asking for the public's forgiveness. The college professor said he would still think he walked on the moon anyway. I mean, if you can imagine that, that I don't know what age the guy was when it happened, but probably 10 years old watching it on television. And he thinks he knows better as a 10 year old sitting watching it on TV than the man who was there. This is a religious attachment to people. I mean, it's as far as conspiracy. What did you call it, Chris? Conspiracy what? Realist. Yeah, conspiracy conspiracy realist. Uh, And this is one of the things I talk about in my book, which you can get at sabrell.com. It's S as in Sam, I, B as in boy, R-E-L, sabrell.com. It's my last name. And I talk about that really half of all crimes are conspiracies. Half are done in the heat of the emotion of the moment and half are plotted out in advance. That's why when they go after mobsters, the charge is conspiracy. They conspired with great planning to commit these crimes. And so someone who says, you know, conspiracy is not true. It's multiple times in the Bible. There are federal codes 
about conspiring to commit crimes and it's called conspiracy. So the fact is people like you and I were truth seekers. And if you believe in God, or you could just look around, if you're an atheist, the world is messed up. It's a fallen place. Uh, I was at church once on a Wednesday night when it's kind of interactive and they're like, who's Lord of the earth. And everyone's like Jesus. And the guy says, wrong, read your Bible. Lucifer's Lord of the earth. And if you read Luke four, Lucifer said to Jesus, He'll give him all the kingdoms of the world if he bows down to Lucifer. And Lucifer says, because they belong to him and he can give them to anyone he wants. So that means the rulers of the world are like him, liars and murderers and thieves. You see, if Jesus were Lord of the earth, there wouldn't be pedophilia. There wouldn't be rape. There wouldn't be murder. There wouldn't be incest. There wouldn't be robbery. There wouldn't be crime. There wouldn't be war all the time. There wouldn't be violence, you see. So we lived in a messed up world. And what's ironic is that mankind's, quote, greatest accomplishment is a complete fraud. And the number one here, uh, reason I hear in defense of it is, well, the government wouldn't lie about such an important thing. Well, Robert McNamara was the defense secretary during the Vietnam War. And when that was starting, China, you know, was backing North Vietnamese. And the U.S. wanted to basically have a proxy war against China. And they do that a lot, really, to test. It's like military exercises with live ammunition. That's right. why the U.S. is un in war all the time. They're, they're getting political objectives, which are generally commercial corporate objectives. But they're also constantly keeping their armed forces in a well-trained <laughs> state, right? That's why they do it. So the American public didn't want to have anything to do with that. In fact, prior to December 6th, uh, 1940. One, right? Or was that, yeah, 1941? Mm -hmm. uh, they were against entering, you know, the World War II, as it was later called. Uh, and then after Pearl Harbor, December 7th, uh, everyone was, you know, 90% for when a day before they were 90% against. So Robert McNamara at the Defense Department said, you know, we need something like that. We need, we need a, a Pearl Harbor event to anger up the blood of the Americans to get them to support this war. That event was called the Gulf of Tonkin. Right. Now, that was the alleged North Vietnamese ship attacking a U.S. ship, which would enrage the public and want to get even. Well, on his deathbed, he said that he and the CIA made that up. It never happened. Wikipedia even admits it never happened. But now, wait a minute. That led to the death of three million people including 58,220 Americans. So if the federal government is willing to kill 58,220 of their own people without cause, I think they're willing to fake an image on a television. And mind you, there's no independent press coverage. It's not like World War II happening in front of a billion eyewitnesses. This is a rocket going up with three government employees. And if they say these pictures are coming from the moon, there's no way to verify them, you see? So... When I first heard this notion and I went back to these pictures on my wall, suddenly my eyes were no longer wide shut. They were wide open. And I saw, you know, like where the soil ended and where the fake backdrop began. And I'm like, huh, you can actually see where the backdrop is, but you don't see it unless you're looking for it. So if you assume they're on the moon, you're just completely oblivious to the fake walls, which you can discern if you're looking for them. So fast forward another 10 years, I'm 24 at this point in the story. And I talk about all this in my book, Moon Man, the true story of a filmmaker on the CIA hit list, which is at sabrell.com in audio. I read it or Kindle or print. And I'm editing one day. By this time, I'd become a filmmaker. And of course, a filmmaker's job is to make fake scenes look real. So all the more can I tell that these pictures were absolutely lit with electrical light and not sunlight. In fact, you can prove that the moon landings are fake with a single photograph. Just go to sabrell.com, click on the top left button, Moon Man video links. The book is interactive with 16 links. And the very first one is a three minute video where I can show you shadows intersecting at 90 degrees that should be parallel in sunlight, proving it was taken with electrical light which means they're on Earth and not on the moon. I mean, you can actually prove scientifically the moon landings are fake with one photograph of the shadows intersecting at 90 degrees when they should be parallel. That's it. That's over. I mean, what more? That's it. 
that. There's no way to duplicate that in sunlight, right. which means it's electrical light, which means it's there in a TV studio, right? Was it multiple so lights? One day I, uh, or one light where you're really close. I mean, the sun is 93 million miles away, so it's going to throw shadows in the same direction over an entire continent or moon. But if the light is really close, like a studio light on a stand, and you're standing to the left of it, your shadow is going to go in one direction. If I'm standing to the right of the light, it's going to go in a different direction. Or it could be two lights, which, of course, also proves it was fake. So one day I'm editing a film for the guy who's produced a TV show of the guy I saw as a 14-year-old saying, we didn't go to the moon, and he worked at NASA for six years. I'm like, oh, what was that guy's name on that TV show you produces? I don't remember call the San Francisco office. So I did. And they said, you know, had I called a couple of days later, they wouldn't be able to tell me because every 10 years they throw away all the old archives and make room for the new because videotapes take up a lot of space. Right. 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 I got lost you there. Especially broadcast quality without it. And I'm like, let me think about this. And I start uh, realizing there's a lot of odd things about it. First of all, the shadows intersect and the lighting. I can tell even what kind of lighting they're using. You know, I went to a wine tasting seminar once and the guy teaching it, you know, can tell you it's from France and the southern part of France and this year and they had a drought that year, all from the taste. And I'm like, really? You know, I see lighting of, you know, pictures and a kind of light, umbrella lighting, which was kind of new back then, to soften the light, you don't know, bounce it directly on the subject, like pointing reflective umbrella, which bounces it back all the time, and that's how they're able to see. You really wouldn't see bright sunlight with that dark of a shadow, but they're like, well, people want to see, so let's supplement it a little bit. So I could tell that. And then the Soviets were much more advanced. They launched everything first. Every space milestone in the history of space flight was done by the Soviet Union, except for some reason going to the moon, and they haven't gone to this day. The first satellite, the Soviets, the first animal, the Soviets, the first man, the Soviets, the first of two spacecrafts at the same time, the Soviets, the first spacewalk, the Soviets. For every 10 hours we spent in space, they spent 50 hours so much more advanced and they never win. I'm thinking that's kind of odd. Then I find out the administrator of NASA, James Webb, right before he can you know, say he was the leader of the mission to the moon, he just resigned without explanation. Didn't want to have anything to do with it. I'm thinking that's kind of weird. And then two of the three astronauts on the first most glorious famous mission refused to give interviews, refused to talk about it. Two of the three. I'm thinking that's kind of weird. Yeah, you can see like yeah. uh, the emotion on their face. Um, yeah, they, uh, you know. Yeah, you're right. A and, uh, you know, and a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. We can get into it later, but we found classified footage of fake photography of them faking part of the mission right in front of your eyes with the third track of audio telling them how to do it. <laughs> I mean, when I saw that, I mean, I knew for a fact they didn't go. But there's a another segment in the film, and you can see this for free. Go to sabrell.com. Click on the top left button, Moon Man video links. And link number two is a funny thing happened on the way to the moon, which cost nearly a million dollars to produce and was financed by someone who builds rockets for NASA who knows it's fake because he thought it was his patriotic duty, right? So, but it also in the film is like maybe 10 seconds of their one and only press conference where they were all together talking about, you know, how it was to walk on the moon a few weeks later. And they look like they're at their mother's funeral. I yeah. mean, just depressed, looking down. About four out of five people say the number one proof is what it is for me, that one foot model of the earth of them faking and pretending to be halfway to the moon. That's proof for me. I mean, that's what convinced me. But some people, one out of five say it's the expressions on their faces during the press conference that this is something's not right here. And they're absolutely correct. They should be like the winning, you know, locker room of the Super Bowl. You right. can't wipe a smile off their face, but they're the exact opposite. They're lying through their teeth and they hate it. And you can see it on their faces for the entire hour. 
Well, any case, so I start finding out that there's more and more clues that seem to point to maybe they really did fake it. And it scares me, Chris. I'm like, gee whiz, this is a real possibility that they faked the moon landing. And I'm thinking, you know, I like puzzles and I kind of have this uh, relentless, never give up personality. And I'm thinking with that combined, maybe I, I could find out whether they went or not with you know a lot of digging. And then I realized if they didn't go and I start looking into this, that could be dangerous. And I thought, hmm, should I risk my life for what Nixon did? And I say, no. So I turned down the project. Then I have another client, a famous Christian musician. And they say, uh, Bart, we'll get uh, one of your screenplays. So you want to be a feature filmmaker back then and still today. Still, still going for that, right? And they say, we'll get this screenplay of yours to a famous producer if I do them a favor. And I'm like, well, what favor? They said, read the Bible. Now, I had the Bible on the shelf next to the dictionary, the source, encyclopedias, in case I needed to look something up. But I certainly never read the thing because I associated it. I put it in the same box with hypocritical religion. Don't want to have anything to do with those things. You know, I grew up in a hypocritical religion and left the first day became voluntary to not, you know, attend and, you know, never looked back. Uh, but I'm like, okay, you know, and then they recommended a one-year Bible, which divides it into 365 calendar reads, you know, January 1st and so forth and so on. And over the next five years, I read the Bible five times from cover to cover. And I realized, oh, this is pretty simple, you know, and the, the idea that people made it up, that's not true because it's not flattering at all to the heroes of the Bible. They're committing incest, they're killing people, they're committing adultery. These are the heroes. So I think if they were going to, you know, make it up, they wouldn't put that stuff in there. They make themselves look better, right? And it's pretty straightforward. I mean, don't kill each other. You know, don't cheat on your spouse. Don't lie. Don't steal. And here are some, you know, encouragements how to, how to live a right life. And that's basically what it says. It's not that complicated. And so it developed in me, you know, an understanding there is good versus evil. I mean, come on, raping babies is wrong. Killing somebody is wrong. Taking somebody's property that they work for without you earning it is wrong. And when a politician says before they're elected, they're not going to make uh, you know, medicine for an illness you don't even have mandatory. And six weeks later, they say it's mandatory or you're fired for all government employees. That's a lie. And they, uh, it's, I don't know why it's not in the books, but when a politician makes a lie, they should be booted out immediately and thrown in jail. That should be a law. So how, how a world leader can promise to do something you know, or not do something and then do the opposite a few weeks later, that should be illegal for one. So we know lying is wrong. I wasn't a Christian. This reading the Bible didn't make me a Christian, but it did convince me there's there's a battle going on here between good and evil, right and wrong, truth and lies. And I realized, Chris, that if they fake the moon landing, that's actually more significant than if they had actually gone. Do you see that? We have on the one hand, they could, you know, fly a rocket up, plant a flag, come back, whoop de doo or they made it all up. And they did it, and they murdered people to keep it a secret, and they embezzled $200 billion, and it's in the encyclopedia, and it's wrong. It's on stamps and coins, and it's wrong. And they gave them medals of honor for lying. If that's true, that's actually more profound historically than if they'd actually gone. So what I realized is, potentially, we have one of the greatest events in human history is the faking of the moon landing. And no one knows about it. No one knows about this valuable lesson that will teach mankind an important lesson about ourselves. Because, Chris, faking the moon landing is actually juvenile. Kennedy set a goal. It couldn't be done. I mean, NASA has never kept a schedule, not a single time, except the most complicated mission of all time. They can't even put a telescope into Earth orbit without being 10 years behind schedule. They said in 2014, they're going to have people orbiting the moon in 2018. You double the time, eight years, and you only have mannequins 
orbiting the moon, you see, which is kind of weird. So what we have is one of the greatest events in human history is the faking of the moon mission. And if mankind doesn't know those are our leaders, because it was juvenile, that it proves our leaders are just juvenile. They didn't have the guts to admit that they couldn't do something. And they literally lied and cheated like a bunch of college kids who can't pass the exam. And then worse than that, you see, if they just faked the moon mission and didn't kill anybody, you might kind of have a certain secret admiration for them. You know, like the guy who tunnels from the dry cleaner into the bank and gets away, right? But what if he killed uh, three men who have families in order to rob the bank? You don't respect him anymore, do you? And they murdered people to get away with this. They murdered their own. And this isn't my opinion. You know, when I share these things on these interviews, it's really not my opinion. When I talk about this little thing we've been going through for the last three years, I quote people who were former vice presidents at the organization selling medicine to everybody for an illness they don't even have, who said the whole three-year thing is a lie. And this medicine that's supposed to be good for you is the exact opposite. And so this isn't my opinion. I'm passing on the opinions of the experts, right? And... Uh, uh, Apollo astronaut's widow, who I interviewed for four hours, okay, told me her Apollo husband, astronaut, who was going to be the first man to walk on the moon, was murdered by the CIA, period. The guy comes home from work on January 26, 1967, tells his wife, who I interviewed for four hours, Han, for some strange reason, the CIA is all over the launch pad today. I wonder why. Never seen him here before. That's kind of weird. The very next day, the guy is dead, okay? Because he was a whistleblower and he would not cooperate. And he had well established that fact. So when a dead Apollo astronaut's widow tells you her husband was murdered by the CIA and they have proof, I take her word for it. Now, I, I was asked not to put that in my film, but I was allowed to put that in my book. So I did. So this is why NASA is so concerned that the truth come out, not only did they fake the moon landing with one third of our labor, one third of our bank accounts, right? Because the federal income tax, they also used that money to hire CIA agents to murder our neighbors who are trying to expose the crimes. You see, that's our government. That's why they're so concerned to this day, because as I'm sure we'll get into, we have an eyewitness who was there when they filmed the faking of the moon landing. And less than two years ago, when his son, was confirming the information of his father, who was there at the base where the moon landing was filmed. Less than two years ago, Chris, his house was broken into, everything about his father was confiscated, and he was told face-to-face -face by government agents, if he ever spoke to me again, they would kill him and his family. This is less than two years ago. Wow. Because as, as soon as the truth comes out that the moon missions are fake, they're going to have to look into what's called the Apollo 1 fire, which was the CIA's way of murdering those three people. You see, that's why they're so concerned. You know, and, and the other part is, and then I'll let you ask me some questions. And I thank you for letting me ramble no, no. on. That's what this show is it, for. I, w I want you to say to get everything out. You know, <laughs> uh, Basically, uh, the government you know, killed their own president. That's not my opinion. That's the opinion of the dead man's nephew, Robert Kennedy. Now, Robert Kennedy Jr. has more access to what's going on about the Kennedy assassination than anyone, more than Oliver Stone. And if he says his uncle, the president of the United States, John Kennedy, was killed by the CIA, you better believe it, right? But whoever did it, the guy's still dead. It's a sad, sad thing. We have 3,000 architects and engineers who risk their personal reputation saying it's mechanically impossible for a pinhole airplane going through a steel grid to cause its collapse. You could hit it with 10 airplanes and it would not collapse. All you got to do is look at the Oklahoma City bombing photograph. Half the building was blown away. Did it collapse? No. So a little pinhole airplane isn't going to cause a skyscraper to collapse. We have 3,000 architects and engineers sign a petition saying, Something's wrong here. 20 years later, still hasn't gone to trial. My point is, whoever did it, there's still 3,000 people dead. Whoever did Kennedy, the guy's still dead. And we're robbed. We're robbed of that potential destiny that could have been different. You see, they probably wouldn't have faked the moon landing. They probably wouldn't have been involved in Vietnam had he been president. The whole future 
of our country going downhill could have been stopped potentially if that guy had remained president. So we're, we're robbed of that, right, as citizens. But the moon landing lie, you see, is different. It, it's a negative whoever killed Kennedy. It's a negative whoever did 9-11. But this is a positive, right? Nixon said the number one threat to America during his presidency wasn't China, wasn't Russia. It was Americans protesting the federal government. Can you believe that? The number one enemy of America, at least the federal government, is the American people. He said so out of his own mouth because they were getting tired of tens of thousands of their brothers and fathers and sons dying in the Vietnam War. Why are we fighting that? That's not anywhere near us. What does it have to do with us? You see? And so you give them something positive. You give them something positive to cheer about putting a man on the moon. Now, we know from our eyewitness that President Johnson was personally there when they filmed the fake moon landing June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1968 at the very end of his presidency. And he was the one who personally came up with the CIA code name, which is it's published in my book at sabral.com, slam dunk, which meant a guarantee. You see, Von Braun said, if you try it on live TV, you have a 99.999 chance of killing them on national television. But if you fake it, you have a 100% guarantee the mission will be successful. It's a slam dunk. So that was the code name for the faking of the moon landing. And I go into where it was filmed at Cannon Air Force Base and things like that. Which is Where's Cannon? Where is that Cannon Air Force Base? That's in Clovis, New Mexico. And okay. um, my, my father was in the Air Force. And I never heard of it. And I'm like, where's that? I look at it from an aerial Google satellite. It's tiny, which is excellent because fewer eyewitnesses. And then every branch of the military has their special ops intelligence division. The Navy has it. The Army has it. And the Air Force has it. OSI. Yeah, the special ops for the United States Air Force headquarters is Cannon Air Force Base, right? right? And our guy, and I didn't even publish his name in the book because his son was still alive receiving death threats, right? But I, he's died, and so I can mention. The guy's name was Cyrus Eugene Akers, and he was chief of security at the most secretive Air Force Base in the world. And on his deathbed, he confessed that he personally eyewitnessed the faking of the moon landing, and stood beside President Johnson the first of three days of filming, who personally gave him a list of 15 people who were allowed in the VIP door who were allowed to observe it and no one else. He gave me that list, and I published it in the book. Some of these people are still alive. And then the following information I did not put in my book because his son was still alive. His father actually confessed to something else. And he confessed, and what was more important to him, see, he, he, he's dying, right? Cyrus right. Eugene Aker was dying. And he knows he's about to meet God face to face. And will he live forever or be dead forever after Judgment Day? That's what he was thinking. So the Bible says, confess your sin and you'll be forgiven, right? Renounce it. And he confessed what was more important to him which was that he murdered a close friend, a co-worker at Cannon Air Force Base who was going to go to the media and tell the public that he had eyewitnessed the faking of the moon landing because he thought it was morally wrong. Now, whether he was ordered by President Johnson to kill this person or whether he took it as his own initiative as the chief of security of the base, but he personally murdered this man to keep the moon landing fraud a secret. So that's what he really confessed on his deathbed, that he was a murderer and that he regretted it. And then he went on to say the reason why he did it was to cover up the moon landing fraud, which was filmed at his base. All of this information has been verified. Johnson was uh, at Cannon Air Force Base at that time, and one of the people on the list was at Cannon Air Force Base at that time. So that's where it was. And... A funny thing happened in the way to the moon shows a lot of proof of this. And the book Moon Man, which is at Sabrell.com, is kind of the backstory. What was it like producing this movie? What was it like uh, encountering opposition from the government, 
from friends. And at one point, and I don't talk about it in the film, but I do in my book, because I want to kind of put it behind me as a historical record and hopefully go on to other projects. I was at one point kidnapped and drugged by the CIA with truth serum. And I escaped their custody and uh, made my way back to my hometown. Um, and pe- like I got them. I'm going to prove I was drugged by this exotic drug that only the government would have access to. So I give it to a friend to put in a lab in his name, not mine, trying to outwit the CIA. I meet back with him a few days later and he says, well, there was a problem at the lab. And I'm like, oh, what problem? He says, well, funny thing. They had a break in over the weekend. And I said, yeah, well, what of it? He says, well, funny thing. The only thing stolen was your urine sample. <laughs> and so you, the lab people freaked out. They're like, we don't know who you are, but please take your business elsewhere. <laughs> You're not scared. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so I'm like, oh, well, you know, I didn't. And connection keeps cutting off. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it yeah, froze it, for like uh, about my, five, uh, five seconds. Okay, there we go. So it, I'll turn it over to you to ask me some questions. Okay, so <laughs> it's, it's a lot to break down. I mean, you pretty much went 30 minutes, man. <laughs> there you go. 30 minutes for me, 30 minutes for you. Fair. <laughs> I, I really want an hour of just you, but I mean, I have to ask you some questions. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, so th- they essentially embezzled Two billion dollars from uh, the United 100 States. Two hundred billion. Two hundred billion. Wow. In today's dollars, yeah, it costs thirty billion in nineteen sixty nine, which has accrued with inflation to an equivalent of two hundred billion dollars to not go to the moon and to use that money to murder people who tried to expose it. That's that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So has so has any other astronaut come out with the truth or have tried to come out with the truth? Since since you broke this story? Well, before I broke the story, yes. Uh, it'd be one thing if only one man had claimed to walk on the moon. I think they probably would have told the truth by now. But the problem is there's all these other men involved. So confessing one of them is like confessing for everybody else against their will. So that's what they're up against. Plus making the United States of America look foolish, which they're afraid afraid of that. I showed the classified footage to a news director at NBC, the the one we uncovered, which you can see for free at sabrell.com and a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Them faking being halfway to the moon with a one foot model. And the news director says, oh my gosh, this absolutely proves they never left Earth orbit. And I said, yeah, what do we do? And he says, I will not broadcast it for fear what causes civil war. And I said, well, wait a minute. You're afraid to show the corruption of the federal government for fear the corrupt federal government would be brought down. Isn't that a good thing? (laughs) And and so in any case, uh, before I hit the scene, William Casing, my original source at NASA, he wrote a book called We Never Went to the Moon. He was one of the first guests on the Oprah show saying we didn't go to the moon. And so he was the famous moon man before I hit the scene. So you can imagine, uh, to my surprise, if while we're talking here, oops, excuse me, you got to take a call and it's Buzz Aldrin calling me, right? <laughs> so the same, imagine this happening and it did happen. In August of 1991, Bill Casey, after being on the Oprah Winfrey show, got a call from one of the Apollo astronauts. Mind you, the astronaut called him. He didn't call the astronaut. And the astronaut who called him was James Irwin, right? I think he's from Apollo 15. And he says, I've become a born again Christian. We need to have a serious talk about the accusations in your book. He said, I'm concerned for my security. Call me at this number three days from now. And on that day, the astronaut had a fatal heart attack, which we know can easily be induced. They even have little dart guns that get, hit you with the needle and you have a heart attack in about 10 seconds. So, that is what happened. One of them did try to come forward and they took care of business. I can tell you that I've met with Apollo astronauts off the record. 
There's the follow-up film, Astronauts Gone Wild, right. which you can see for free at sabrell.com. It's not as polished of a film as a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. However, it does show me confronting several Apollo astronauts with the footage we uncovered of fake photography and getting their reaction. One kicks me, one threatens to shoot me, one threatens to hit me, one punches me. And in one case, we accidentally left a wireless microphone in his house and forgot to turn off the camera, which was recording outside. And we hear him and his son plotting my assassination by the CIA. Crystal clear on the audio, hence the title, Moon Man, the true story of a filmmaker on the CIA hit list. And some of these astronauts spoke with me off the record. And I can tell you that two of them made it very clear to me that they did not go to the moon and good luck, <laughs> you know, good luck proving it. Right. And uh, so, you know, what can you do? People want to believe it. And like the college professor, even a confession from an Apollo astronaut wouldn't deter them from believing the glorious we went to the moon. And this is why they're so concerned that the truth comes out, because it's different, even though it killed fewer people, probably, than even the Kennedy assassination witness list who were knocked off. It's the one, I think, that would enrage the public the most, because they got down on their knees and they prayed and they cried. And it's that candy. It's taking candy away from a baby and giving them manure instead. You see? Right. And if I think it would just be shocking. And I think I think it would be the finger out of the dike and the beginning of the collapse of the corrupt federal government. The news director at NBC said the very same thing. He says, this will cause the collapse of the federal government. So I won't broadcast it. Can you imagine? NBC News, the greatest story in the country. They agree it's true and they refuse to broadcast it for fear the corrupt federal government would be brought down with the exposure of their corruption. I mean, unbelievable. You know, there was a historic opportunity just passed on. Another, 10 years later, another NBC news director saw the same footage, came to the same conclusion. This proves they didn't go to the moon. We're going to broadcast it nationwide. We're going to have a special, a TV special. They flew me to New York, put me up in a fancy hotel, interviewed me. They said, this is breaking news. We're going to break this story worldwide. Filmed it, got it already, edited it together. They canceled it. I asked the producer, why did you cancel it? I said, well, we got a very threatening phone call from the United States government. So there you go. That's the world that we live in. Right, right. So, okay. So I know that there's like this, that I've seen the anomalies because you've been looking into this and others can see certain things that other people can't. But I know one of the things that really got my attention was the flag that's not supposedly on the moon and it's blowing somewhat in the wind. What other anomalies are on film and, and also in pictures. Can, can you talk about? Well, there's a lot. <laughs> there's, a, there, there's some shown in a funny thing happened on the way to the moon and astronauts gone wild, but there's even more out there than that. I mean, just lots of them. Yeah. They uh, were on earth. Therefore they had to have those air conditioning units that were allegedly in the backpack removed because the weight would be too heavy and earth gravity. They'd fall over. So they were inside these spacesuits with no air conditioning and got really hot. So they probably pumped a lot of air conditioning in the studio where they filmed it. And that occasionally caused the bottom of the flag to just kind of blow like, uh, you know, move like wind was hitting it. They try to explain that away, but it looks like wind to me. Then, mm -hmm. of course, shadows intersecting at 90 degrees when they should be parallel backgrounds that they say are in one location and yet the exact same background is in what they claim is a completely different location rocks with letters on them to indicate you know this is for setup a b c and d if you wow. letter, letter c on it um i mean just just an enormous amount of things uh, astronaut falling over and somehow being yanked up like he's on a cable the most famous picture of buzz aldrin with his arm bent there's so many clues in that. You can see the fake backdrop behind him where the soil stops and the fake backdrop begins. His arm is being leisurely held at 90 degree bend when in the space station, when they do a spacewalk, they have to have a hinge there because a pressurized suit won't allow you to bend your arm. So how is he bending his arm without that hinge? And then the wrinkles all in the guy's suit. I thought it was pressurized. Uh, how many wrinkles are in a balloon? 
you know. <laughs> and then yeah, there's yeah. no antenna. Where's the guy's antenna in the most famous picture? Because I have uh, uh, really close to the original version of that. And you can see uh, a piece of black masking tape play, pay, placed on top of the original photograph because apparently he was being held up by cables. And even though they were black, they showed up. So at the last minute, they put a piece of black on top of there to cover it up. But if you get close to the original, you can see the black of the, you know, quote, outer space behind him below the back pack is one shade of black and above the black pack is a different shade of black. And that's where they mask something on top and inadvertently getting rid of the antenna sticking up. So how's he talking to earth without an antenna, right? Because they literally put a piece of black tape over the original because it showed the cables. And I guess they were on a deadline and it just got rid of the antenna. And someone thought that was no big deal. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a clue right there. And, uh, you know, and then, I mean, just go on and on. I mean, you can prove, like I said, go to sabrell.com, click on, moon man video links one shadows intersecting at 90 degrees from objects five feet apart when they'd be parallel in sunlight i mean that proves it then you have the logic i mean if today with nasa's best technology which is 50 years greater technology right than they had in 1969 the farthest they can send a human being into outer space is 250 miles but the moon is a thousand times farther so that means with one millionth the computing power of a cell phone, they went a million, I mean, a thousand times farther. So what they're saying is they had a thousand times farther space traveling capability in 1969 than they do today. And that means there's greater technology in the past than in the future. Well, wait a minute. That's a scientific impossibility. That's a historic impossibility. So you can't have greater technology in the past and in the future, which means that technology did not exist. You see, that proves it. Then you have the one foot model of the earth that we uncovered an unedited reel that says, do not show to the public at the very beginning, the lights come up and they're using a one foot model to pretend they're looking back at the earth floating in space and a third track of audio of the CIA telling them to fake a four second radio delay to make it look like they're further than earth orbit. That proves it also. That's what proved it to me. And then you have an eyewitness, right? When someone eyewitnesses someone shooting somebody, that's enough to send the guy to jail or to the electric chair. So we have an eyewitness who sat on his deathbed, and a deathbed testimony is considered twice as valuable, twice as legally binding as right. a regular testimony. And he said he murdered somebody. I don't think you're going to make that up. You're not going to say I'm a murderer as you're dying unless it's true. And then he said the reason why he's a murderer was to cover up the moon landing fraud, which was filmed at his base, Cannon Air Force Base, Clovis, New Mexico, June 1st, 2nd, 3rd of 1968. So we have an eyewitness. We have four proofs that would prove it independently. You could add the fact that they destroyed all the original hardware, all the original blueprints, all the original electrical diagrams, all the original telemetry where the rocket was, and all the original videotapes. Now, wait a minute. If you really went to the moon and you spent $200 billion, right? Imagine Bill Gates spends $200 billion to build the first AI computer. And it's like, boy, this works great. And then when he's done, he throws it in a furnace with all the original diagrams. You would never do that. The B-52 bomber is 70 years old, and there's still 200 flying of them in the United States Air Force because it works so good. If they had hardware that could bounce to the moon six times and back, why would they destroy that $200 billion investment? However, if they perpetrated a fraud, and you could prove by the diagrams that it couldn't do these claims of fuel, electricity, you know, battery power to keep air conditioning at bay at 250 degrees outside. If it were a fraud, you would get rid of everything. So the fact that they destroyed everything is actually proof of the fraud, because if you really went, you wouldn't do that. And if you permitted, committed a fraud, that's exactly what you would do. So you see, destroying all the documentation, the hardware, the videotapes, that proves they didn't go, because if you really went, you would never do that, you see? So that proves it.
So there's all these proofs that they didn't go. And if, because it's such an emotional thing, putting a man on the moon, it's hard to get people to separate themselves from that. Fortunately, time is doing that for us because the people who are tearing up watching it on TV who have that emotional imprinting, they're dying off. And objective young 14-year-olds like myself, when I first was you know, faced with this, uh, are looking at it objectively. And they're like, oh, here, here's the claim and here's all these uh, proofs that they didn't go. I guess they didn't go. That's just the way that it is. I mean, I don't know what to say. Hitler had children, I'm sure, or cousins or aunts or uncles or brothers or whatever. And I'm sure they all thought he was a great guy, right? And uh, But he fooled them, right? And all the Americans think, you know, the, the moon missions are great and they're being fooled. They're being taken advantage of. And people outside the country are more objective about it. And people who weren't brainwashed at the time are more objective to it. We have to face facts. And when Orwell said, whoever controls the past controls the future, this is a perfect example of that because in the past, they're controlling it. They keep saying the lie that the moon missions are real when they certainly were not. So they're controlling the past, the criminals. And if they control the past, then they control the future, which means until the moon landing fraud comes out, those same criminal entities are controlling our government, right? A bank robber is going to keep robbing banks until he gets caught. That's what they do. And so if we don't expose the moon landing fraud, as embarrassing as it might be, then we have no hope of reforming our government. We'll be stuck with criminals who are getting better and better and better and more and more criminals as time goes on. They're gangsters. Those are the people who run our country. They're gangsters. And... A corrupt president from whichever party. It's not about red or blue. Don't be deceived. Blue president was there when they filmed the fake moon landing. And red president gave it the thumbs up. And the next term, it's not about that. These are the people. And then they, they appoint all the heads of every department are appointed by the corrupt president. That shouldn't be allowed. The last chapter of my book is what to do about this mess. And one of those things is to not allow presidential appointments of all the government agencies. That's why we're so messed up. The FBI knows who's honorable in the FBI. Let them elect their own leader. Let the Justice Department elect their own leader. Let the FDA elect their own leader. I mean, the FDA is a revolving door between people who run pharmaceutical companies. They used to run a pharmaceutical company. Now they're president of the FDA or they're president of the FDA. Now they run a pharmaceutical company. I mean, how can that not be a conflict of interest? It's mind boggling. And yet that goes on all the time. So our government is constantly breaking their own laws. They apply to the people, but not to themselves, which is the definition of tyranny. That's the kind of government we have. Congress and the Senate didn't vote to fake the moon landing. So voting for your representatives does nothing whatsoever. 90% of Americans wanted to know whether GMOs were in their bottle of ketchup. I'm going to swallow this thing. Please tell me if it's genetically modified. The Bible actually says not to do it. Leviticus 19.19, 19, don't crossbreed species. And when you do, when you take a horse and a, and a donkey to get a mule, the mule is sterile. Hmm. I wonder why fertility rates are down by 65% right after they introduced GMOs in the food supply. So 90% of Americans wanted to know whether GMOs were in their food. The president vetoed it. 90%. Wow. 90% cannot have their way. A democracy is supposed to be 51% having their way. But 90% cannot have their way in this country. The president's going to do what the corporations want him to do or her to do. So this is not a democracy. That's a lie. They say, statistically, physical slavery, people being abducted and sold into sex slavery or labor slavery or whatever. There's actually more slaves right now on planet Earth than at any other time in human history. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine can. that? Unfortunately, I can. <laughs> And what's the best way to have a slave? To trick them into thinking they're free. You're free, right? right. You yep. realize you have, to, you have to ask permission to get married. You have to ask permission to go fishing. And with the you know, little events going on, which you know, the Constitution 
doesn't change when it rains or when it's dry. And it doesn't change during flu season or out of flu season. You see, the laws are the laws, regardless of whatever. That's why they're written as unchangeable laws, right? If you have to ask permission to open your business, if you have to ask permission to go to school, if you have to have permission to go to the beach, people are being dragged off of the beach, thrown into handcuffs and put in jail for going to the beach when the government told them they can't go to the beach. That's slavery. That's not freedom. That's slavery. How can you possibly think that you're free when you have to ask permission to go to church, to go shopping, to travel? You have to get permission. Why does one person wearing a uniform have power over another person not wearing a uniform? That's slavery, people, right? They're supposed yet they, to be our and they, keep, they keep McDonald's open and they keep Walmart open, but they shut down the gyms. You know, they keep liquor that, stores open. That. If there's a disease going around, it's up to the individual to decide whether to take that chance. I did statistics in my own city of Nashville, right? More people die in automobile accidents on the way to church than they do from catching viruses at church. So what we need to do is make cars illegal. I'm sorry, you're, you're going to have to walk everywhere. Cars are just too dangerous, okay? They're killing more people than viruses. So we we're just automobiles are now illegal. Sorry, you're going to have to walk. It's for public safety, right? No, it's the right of the individual to take that chance. And it's the right of the individual to take a chance uh, to open a business or to go to a business. It's not somebody else who wears a uniform to tell us when we can open our business or not. That is a dictatorship and that is slavery. Massa, Massa, can I go outside today? Massa, can I, can I, can I go for a walk? No. Okay. I'm sorry, Massa. I just was asking, you know, give me a break. <laughs> you know, that's what we got. That's, that's the world that we live in. Maybe you had part that part out. Maybe that's offensive. I don't know. But oh, who cares, man? Come on, man. We, we're in 2023. People are still offended but, but, by that. It's ridiculous. But, 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 that, but that's, that's the way that it is. Right. You know, we're slaves. And so, you know, our slave, it's supposed to be public servants, right? Public servants. Uh, but there are masters. They're constantly telling us what to do, what not to do. We're supposed to be telling them what to do and what not to do, right? Don't appoint corrupt leaders of departments. Don't, don't uh, you know, appoint pharmaceutical presidents to the FDA to approve pharmaceutical drugs. Doesn't that sound fair? We should be telling them that, right? We're to tell them what to do, right? Don't appoint pharmaceutical presidents as leaders of the FDA to appoint, to approve pharmaceutical drugs. Don't do it, but they're doing it because they're the masters and we're the slaves, right? All in the land of the free. Well, it's not the land of the free, free press. I'm a journalist, work for NBC, work for ABC, write for online magazines. I put up a video on the neutral publishing platform. They take it down because it's, it's the government says to, the government says, no, 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 we can't, we can't have messages like that. All I am is telling the truth. The moon landings are fake. All I am is telling the truth. A former vice president of a company selling this medicine that everyone's taken for an illness they don't have said there's no reason to take it and it's not good for you. You would think that's a qualified opinion. Isn't it interesting? The guy who invented the technology that everyone's injecting into themselves, the guy who invented it, right? they will not allow him to speak publicly. If, if an interview is put of him on Facebook or YouTube of the inventor of the technology that everyone is injecting themselves with, if he shares what he thinks about it, they take it down. They're taking down the truth. So what is left? Lies. Um, yep. How about that? And who is the father of lies? Lucifer. And who does the Bible says runs the world? Lucifer. And who does it say he appoints to leaders of all the kingdoms of the world, the countries, the same people, liars. So that's why they fake the moon landing. They're liars. That's what they're doing now. They're liars. They say before they're elected, no forced medicine. And after they're elected, forced medicine. And, and they're still in office. They should, number one, we should write them. We should tell them, you do that, you're immediately out of office. And secondly, in jail. That's what, there should be a law 
that if a politician, public servant, says they're going to do or not do something, and if they do the opposite, that's the last day in office, they can never be in office ever again, and they go to jail for 10 years. That should be a law. We should be telling them what to do. Do that, and that will be what happens to you. Why isn't it that way? Why is the leader of a country allowed to make a promise and immediately break it without any repercussions? And then run for re-election. <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense. Why are the rules like that? I mean, it, it's just a joke. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I have uh, one of my favorite people in the world. You know, he's a, he's a legend. But I heard he's affiliated. It's a rumor that he's affiliated with the moon landings. Bruce Lee, is it true that he was affiliated with that? With the fake well, moon? I got an email from somebody saying, because on this list that I publish in my book, Moon Man at Sabrell.com, it's a list of 15 people who were there at Cannon Air Force Base. President Johnson picked these people. These people are allowed in. Now, mind you, this is not the crew door. This is the visitor's door. That's a different list. So on that visitor's list was Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. So they're not actually in the spacesuits in the pictures or the TV images, are they? No, they're not. And so someone else is in there. And we talked about there's no air conditioning units in there. You need a super duper duper strong person to sweat and sweat and sweat and carry around that heavy equipment on Earth and act like you're on the moon. Somebody suggested it was Bruce Lee. Well, you know, the guy who played, what was it, Kato and the Green mm -hmm. Hornet? A very, very strong person, super strong. And, and, uh, and half strength, if not more than half, is mental, right? There's a lot of tiny little people who I know who are bone thin. And I can see in their face, they are a determined individual. And I, and I, and I was looking at one before I met, met them. They were in church and talking. And I'm like, that guy is strong. I can just see it. Physically strong determination mentally strong. The guy's bone thin in short. And I'm shaking a bunch of hands after church service. I come to him just like almost crushes my hand. Right. And I'm like, boy, was I right about that? So karate, you know, to chop something. Yeah, it's physical strength, but I think it's more mental strength. And so Bruce Lee had odes and odes of both. So someone said he was one of the people in the spacesuits. And of course, could be true. I don't know. Someone could dig into it, see where he was in June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1968. Did he go on vacation? You know, uh, where was he? You might be able to find that out. Johnson was one hour flight away on holiday from Cannon Air Force Base. So could he have been there on June 1st? Yeah. In fact, Cannon Air Force's base website boasted President Johnson paid us a visit in 1968. And as soon as we started uncovering this stuff, they took it down. Oh, and wow. one, of the people, one of the people on the list, Robert Emmenager, in his autobiography, says he was at Cannon Air Force Base. And All right, buddy. We're back on there. All right. So let me just ask you one more question because I know you got to go soon. Um, and I appreciate this. Uh, concerning space, right? Uh, I talked to an individual yesterday. I interviewed him about Mars and anomalies that he's finding on, with photos from the Mars rover. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what, can you what can you tell me about other lies concerning space? Well, you're talking about the NASA pictures from Mars. Right. The only pictures we have from Mars are from NASA. NASA faked the moon landing pictures, right? right. So there's a big push to get people to believe that they need to take medicine for an illness they don't have. A big push for it, right? And there's a big push to get people to believe in UFOs and aliens. A big push, right? Now, if NASA faked images that were supposed to be Neil Armstrong on the moon or Buzz Aldrin on the moon, and they're really in New Mexico, right? Then, for all we know, the pyramids on Mars and the face on Mars are completely made up to trick people into believing in UFOs, you see? Now, a lot of people will not give up the fact that the moon landings were fake. They just still believe they're real because they want to believe in space travel and Star Trek and things like that. A lot of people will not give up aliens either because they want to believe in the League of Planets, and Star Wars, and Star Trek, and all that stuff. They won't give it up. I wrote an article. Go to sabrell.com 
scroll down about halfway. It's called, Are There Really Aliens from Outer Space? And the latest scientific discoveries say no. They've been pointing radio telescopes in all directions for 50 years, not a single radio transmission. There's a book out called The Privileged Planet. Though Both of these are linked in my article. And they did a mathematical analysis from the molecular level up to the level that we can see and touch. And they say life should not even exist on Earth. So the idea that it's abundant everywhere is the the opposite is true. Mind you, the government wants you to believe the opposite of what is true. They want you to believe there's an illness when there's not. They want you to believe a medicine is good when it's not. They want you to believe the moon landings are real when it's not. And they want you to believe in aliens. They're leaking stuff out trick you into believing it when there's not he said from mathematical analysis this is scientific the odds of life being on earth are so astronomical it'd be like winning the powerball lottery 20 times in a row it shouldn't even exist here and for all we know this is the only life they want us to believe life is everywhere i think this is the only life and if you believe in the bible the bible actually says believe it or not Life only exists on earth. It says in Revelation 21, 3, that when God makes the new heaven and the new earth, after this one is destroyed by fire, hmm, I wonder what the, how that's going to happen. It says that God is going to personally dwell with us. Now, wait a minute. It says multiple times in the Bible that God does not show partiality. He's fair to everyone. So if there's life in other worlds and he's dwelling with us, and he's disrespecting them. The only way that he could dwell with us and not show partiality is if we're it. You see, Janet Napolitano, let me add, and I talk about this in another article I wrote about Planet X. Eisenhower had his famous farewell speech, last day in office, right? January 19th, 1961, warned us that dark forces in our country were taking over. He had eight years to warn us. Why is he warning us in his last day? Because he was afraid of them. He was afraid if he warned you about them while in office, they would take him out. And he was right because Kennedy warned about us when he was in office and they took him out. So Janet Napolitano wanted to say something, get off her chest. The last day she was in office, she said a natural disaster is coming that has never happened in America And whoever deals with it after me is going to need a big bottle of Tylenol. Now, there's three clues here. What's coming is a natural disaster. What's coming is a natural disaster that has never happened in the history of America in the 247 years. So we've had volcanoes. We've had earthquakes. We've had tidal waves and we've had uh, hurricanes. But we've never had a meteor or a comet or a rogue planet. You see, that's a natural disaster. It's never happened in the history of America. And you can't predict an earthquake or a volcano years in advance, can you? She says it was coming. But you could predict, the only natural disaster you could predict is one from outer space because of the math, the geometry of comets, asteroids, and rogue planets. I think something like that is coming. I think that's why the Bible says the earth will be destroyed with fire. And Jesus says there will be signs in the heavens that men will look up and their hearts will melt with fear for what is coming upon the earth from the heavens. Rogue planet, common asteroid. I think that's why they're trying to reduce the number of people on earth now with this little medicine is to prepare for that event. The book of Revelation says the first big calamity is going to get rid of a third of the people right? Or sorry, a quarter of the people. So if we're 8 billion people, that knocks it down to 6 billion. So we got 6 billion left. And then the next one, which is things coming from the sky, says it's going to get rid of a third. A third of six is another two. So that's already half the people dying if the Bible is true and revelation is beginning in the near future. So it's my opinion that the world leaders know that's coming and they want to do a controlled burn. Uh, phase one of this great medicine and Hitler's useless eaters are the exact same list. The elderly, the obese, the diabetic, you see, trimming down the people who are dependent, uh, who we're spending money on, who aren't contributing financially. Uh, 
I'm starting a new podcast. Go to sabrell.com and look at the button. And uh, one of my first videos is a compilation of the chief advisor to the World Economic Forum, Yerve Noah somebody. And these are the people who run the world. And he says, what are we going to do with, you know, two, three billion useless eaters? Says so out of his own mouth. Says things worse than Hitler did. Wow. Openly. Imagine what he's thinking that he's not saying. So I think they want to lower the population now incrementally and getting ready for this solar system incoming planetoid, comet, asteroid, whatever it is. It's my opinion. And there we are. And, you know, the the faking of the moon landing, when Richard Nixon called it the greatest event since creation, when he knew they weren't there, when we call the Titanic, the ship that God himself cannot sink, and look what happens. I think think this faking of the moon landing is a a spiritual message. It shows the ultimate arrogance and deceitfulness of mankind and Lucifer. And that fallen angels are actually aliens. That's what they're disguised as. That's what they're going to be disguised as. And these are the people who run the world. And we're we're in a in a lot of trouble. And I think it's going to get worse. And the only thing you can do is get right with God yourself. Stay right with God. And these people who run the world, they need to meditate on what good is it to gain the whole world and forfeit their soul, because. Yeah. They faked the moon landing. Congratulations. They got away with 9-11. Congratulations. They killed their own president in broad daylight. Congratulations. And then what? After you die and face God, and then what? So what can you do? Just what do you go think? To Sopra- yeah, go, yeah ahead. go ahead. No, no I was going to ask you real quick, and then <laughs> we'll end it after that. But what do you think yeah. of these train derailments and that those uh, spy balloons? Is that more of a psyop again still? This, this balloons definitely are. I mean, it amazes me that people who are in charge of alternative media know the moon landings are a scam. No, this last thing for the last three years is a scam. But suddenly they repeat the evening news about Chinese spy balloons. You know, I know someone who personally works in China at the headquarters of the space agency. And they say we all know the moon missions are fake. But we have an agreement with NASA not to say it publicly in exchange for getting secret technology from them. So the CIA is in love with China. So for all we know, they'll stage World War III, and it's just a big wrestling match between the two countries. You know, that's fake, that, you know, people will die. It won't be fake in that way, but it's all planned. They're all part of the same group. I mean, we, we don't know. So this whole spy balloon thing and then the alternative media to repeat it, like China, some you know spy threat, they're being used. They're being played. Just like when they leak out you know, faces on Mars or pyramids on Mars, you're being played. These are pictures from the same people who fake the moon landing pictures. Right. And they want you to believe in aliens when science actually says there is no life anywhere else. Scientists are saying this. We're it. That's it. So... You got to be careful. If the if the mainstream media and the government are liars, then why are you believing them about Chinese balloons? You know, I don't understand that. You know, the Chinese admits it. That's weird. Why would the Chinese admit that the federal government is is right? And if they're enemies, you know, that, there's something going on there. They're being played. I'm not sure what's going right. on. But we're being played too. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand. You're reading all these articles about what a threat China is and whatever. Well, well, that's that's the mainstream media line. They want China to appear as a threat to increase their military budget, to have some sort of war with China. And if you repeat all that, you're just doing their work for them. So, you know, don't Bart, fall for it. Pl- plug all your all your stuff. I know you have that website. Plug everything that you want to plug. Yeah, if you just want to link in the bottom of your video, sabrell.com, that's my mm-hmm. website. You can get my book on audio, which I read myself or Kindle or print. You can also read those articles about aliens and Planet X. I spent hundreds of hours researching each article and writing it about whether there's really aliens or not and Planet X and things like that. So all that is available at sabrell.com. What's next for you? Hopefully a feature film. That's my dream uh, is for to do a feature film next. 
and uh, we'll see if the Lord wants that produced and uh, right. we'll do it. And that's what the point of the book is really to just kind of do a final statement on the matter and uh, put that behind me. And if anyone wants to know about it, they can read the book, which has 16 video links for free. Read chapter one, then go to link you know one at sabrell.com. All the links are for free at sabrell.com. And that's basically, I write a chapter, you look at a video, write a chapter, look at a video. So everything is backed up that I'm saying in the book. All right, my man. Thank you so much, Bart. I appreciate it. Um, when I'm done, I'll, I'll post the link up and I'll send it to you so you can spread it if you want to. Um, and you can, if you want the video itself, you can have the video. I'll send that to you as well, if you want it, but thank you so much. I appreciate your time. You're doing incredible work. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. (laughs) And hopefully we're, we're, when I interview you again, after your feature film, hopefully we're still alive by then. We'll see. (laughs) All right. Yeah, really. (laughs) All right, my man. Thank you. Yes, sir.